Hello my students, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We meet again in our class. This time, I'm going to share with you about British Parliamentary English Debate. So this material is derived from my experience as an English lecturer specializing on English studies. Before I begin, I'm going to start by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon to you all. So now I'm going to share the screen to the presentation. And here is the presentation that you uh, see for today. Um, okay, we start from here. So this video is intended for my students who are studying academic and professional speaking with me in Huyen Imam Bonjol Padang. The topic of my presentation right now is British Parliamentary English Debate. I'm going to use English when I'm explaining about this material to the students or to you all but I will occasionally use Bahasa Indonesia if there is important aspect that I need to explain to the students in Bahasa Indonesia. So now we start. Um, I'm going to split my explanation into three sections. The first one is my background dealing with English debate. The second one is the material about English debate. And the third one is the system of the British Parliamentary English debate. It's going to take almost an hour for me to explain about this to you right now. So please stay tuned and please listen carefully so that you can understand the point of what I'm going to explain in this video. And okay, so now here it is. The first one I started by saying, uh, I, I'm showing you this is my uh, certificate when I joined as a participant in English debating contest of uh, PIMNAS 18th in Padang, West Sumatra, July 11th to 12th, 2005. So at the time I was one of the participants in English debate contest. I think we went to a final round at the time. Yes, um, that was a great moment. Now I'm going to move to the next slide. This is the certificate of me. When I finished my studies at Andalas University, I participate as an instructor in English debating training for students of Andalas University. And it took me to serve for about 18 hours. I uh, started from April 26, 2010 to April 28, 2010. So this is the certificate. Um, the next one is this. This is also the certificate from Andalas University. It was approved by Vice Rector for Student Affairs. And I received this in 2010. At the time, I served as an educator of the English Debating Championship. So for you students, you are going to know several terms that relate to English Debating Championship, especially with the British Parliamentary English Debating System. And, um, but at least I am telling you about this to let you know that I had a few experiences not only as a debater, but also as an adjudicator. In formal uh, context, of course. And uh, when I work at uh, this college, Teke Pagish Matrabarat, I served as the head of committee for the uh, debate community. So it was approved by head of the supervisor and uh, we with Sadiasi and also the vice chairperson three for student affairs of this uh, college, right? Now, um, in the following year, I served, 
ini surat dari Yayasan Pendidikan Pengiri Padang Sumatera Barat from Stegi Pengiri Sumatera Barat and uh, this is one of the formal letters of appointment um, the vice chairperson of student affairs Ibu Mulyati approved me to um, to work with students as their advisor in English Asian English Olympics AEO in Binus University Jakarta in 2014 and this is the certificate so I serve as, as an observer in the Asian English Olympics nah, jadi saya berperan sebagai observer atau pengawas dan pembina di acara Asian English Olympics dan itu pada waktu saya masih menjadi dosen uh, Yayasan Pendidikan PGRI Padang Sumatera Barat Um, kemudian, I will continue my description. This is the, uh, I work as the chief of educator for National University English Debating Championship in 2015, not long ago. And then, ini pemerintah kota Padang, Dinas Pendidikan Sekolah Menengah Kejuruan SMK Duafa Nusantara Padang. Uh, saya dan tim melaksanakan pengabdian pada masyarakat dengan tema meningkatkan kemampuan berpikir kritis melalui kegiatan debat bahasa Inggris di SMK Dua Fa Nusantara Padang. We actually did this community service. We went to the school and we explained about the debate. Um, my partner whose name is Belinda Nalido I went to the school and explained about debate. I also explained about the debate. All right, so that was one of the uh, interesting moments at that time. The next one is when I serve as the adjudicator for Universitas uh, Islam Negeri Imam Bontul Padang of debate competition Fantastic English 2018 on April 29, 2018. And the latest one, when I serve again as the uh, Adjudicator for West Sumatra Senior High School English Debate Competition. Um, this is, uh, I think, at this time, at the time, the debate was uh, American English or Asian Asian debating system style. So, as the chief of adjudicator, I need to understand not only British English debate, but I also need to comprehend the differences between debating styles from Asian debating system to the Australian debating system. I'm going to explain to you about that right in this video. So please stay tuned and listen to the end, okay? Please bear with me. Um, okay, now I will explain to you about the, um, the debate. Sorry, my hair looks like this kind of thing. <laughs> Academic and professional speaking. I take it from World Debating website, news from around the world of debate since 1997. I think the website provided debating tutorial handouts by Colm Flint. So I, I took a few content materials from this debating tutorial handouts and consider this as uh, I quote the source. Okay, now the first one, we talk about general rules and guidelines for debating. The first one, speeches should be seven minutes in duration. Speakers succeeding this may be penalized, but should never be substantially less than this. In general, you should speak for at least six minutes, 45 seconds, and generally no more than seven minutes, 20 seconds, until seven minutes, 30 seconds. Ideally, stay on your feet until you hear the seventh minute bell and then finish. Example, Ms. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to okay, blah, 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 and be in your seat by 7.15. Your times will be recorded by the timekeeper and given to the adjudicators as they leave to make their decision. Jadi di poin pertama ini, intinya adalah... Um, kita memberikan penyampaian debatnya itu selama tujuh menit, durasinya tujuh menit. Kemudian pembicaranya lebih dari tujuh menit akan diberikan penalti. 
atau sanksi dari adjudicator atau juri. Nah, jadi katanya paling tidak kita berbicara di atas panggung itu selama 6 menit 45 detik. Maksimal 7 menit 20 detik atau 7 menit 30 detik. Lebih dari itu maka kita akan terkena penalti. Sekarang kita lihat poin yang kedua. In general, most debates are in English. The main competitions are all in English, but occasionally there are other language debates usually in conjunction with some other event. Debating in Europe, Asia, etc. tends to be in the local language. At world, there is an English as a second language competition. Poin kedua ini menarik. Katanya kebanyakan debat itu seringkali dilaksanakan dengan menggunakan bahasa Inggris. Kompetisi utama mereka dalam bahasa Inggris terutama bahasa-bahasa eh, lainnya berkaitan dengan event-event tertentu. ya. Nah, kalau debat di Eropa, Asia, misalnya di beberapa benua itu menggunakan bahasa lokal masing-masing katanya. Sementara kalau di tingkat dunia, Bahasa Inggris, ada bahasa lomba debat bahasa Inggris sebagai bahasa kedua. Jadi di, dikhususkan, dibedakan. Yang ketiga, the third one, a bell will be rung. After the expiration of one minute and six minutes, the bell will be rung again at seven minutes and regular intervals after that. Jadi ada bell selama lomba atau kompetisi debat tersebut. Bell pertama adalah satu menit pertama berakhir ya kemudian di menit ke-6. Jadi 1 6. Oke, itu caranya. Jadi bell itu misalnya uh, saya berbicara sekarang tat 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 tat. Nah, udah satu menit baru bell berbunyi. Kemudian lanjutkan berbicara menit kedua, ketiga, keempat, kelima, masuk menit ke-6 bunyi bell. Nah, itu sudah masuk 7 menit ya. Jadi 1 tambah 6 jadi 7. Nah, itu terakhir. Yang keempat, we'll see the fourth one. If the chair of the debate is the head of the whole society, he or she usually has a title. Example, speaker, auditor, etc. Most often, the proper form of address is Mr. Speaker or Madam Speaker. You must also acknowledge the adjudicators if there are any. Some speakers will also acknowledge other members of the house. It is basically just a matter of personal preference as to how you begin your speech after acknowledging the chair and adjudicators. For example, Mrs. Speaker, Madam Secretary, adjudicators, ladies and gentlemen. Jadi cara kita membuka debat kita adalah dengan mengaddress ya, atau men menyampaikan kepada ke head of the whole society misalnya yang mengadakan di, di gedung tersebut atau di hall atau aula debat yang ada adalah speaker, auditor kemudian ada juga kita bisa nyebut Mr. Speaker atau kalau dia wanita kita sebut Madam Speaker kalau speaker cukup itu berarti sudah laki-laki dan kita juga harus menyebut adjudicators nah, jadi misalnya begini uh, Mr. Speaker, Madam Secretary adjudicators Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for allowing me to speak in front of all you today. I am as the Prime Minister. I would deliberately state that the motion today is seterusnya dan seterusnya. Nah, seperti itu caranya. ya. Jadi nanti ada saya bahas tentang teknik, cara berbicara, dan penekanannya. Oke, berikutnya kita lanjutkan. Um, the fifth point is points of information may only be offered after the expiration of one minute and may not be given after the expiration of six minutes. Points of information may only be given to opposing speakers and should generally be not more than 15 seconds in duration. The chairman may require the speaker to end a point of information at his or her discretion. The chairman may request a Educators also frown upon barracking, constantly interrupting the speaker by offering points, and the chair is expected to control this. Acceptance of points of information is at discretion of the comp competitor holding the floor. In competitive debates, only the competitors may offer points of information. However, in non-competitive debates, points will often be accepted from the audience. 
Only you have accepted a point of information, you can just ignore it and carry on. You must deal with it or raise the adjudicator's wrath. Ini ada poin tentang uh, points of information yang juga dikenal dengan istilah POI. Jadi POI diberikan satu menit uh, setelah uh, seorang speaker berbicara di panggung. Jadi dia buka di, uh, speech-nya ya. Jadi 0 menit sampai 1 menit, da -da 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 -da, itu nggak boleh POI. Nah, menit kedua itu sudah boleh kita POI. Tapi ingat katanya POI itu hanya maksimal 15 detik. Tidak boleh lebih dari 15 detik. Kita lanjutkan. In most societies, maiden speakers, example, speakers making a speech for the first time, have the protection of this chair. Other speakers may not offer them points of information unless they choose not to accept the protection of the chair. Even if they reject the protection of the chair, most experienced speakers will not offer them a point unless they run into difficulty and it can help them. If you are good enough or misfortune enough, depending on how you look at it, to be making your maiden speech in, in an introversity, rare but has been known to happen, you do not have any special protection. Jadi, maiden speakers ini maksudnya yang pembicara yang pertama kali di dalam uh, debate misalnya ya. Nah, jadi so, diberikan protection of the chair. The chair itu adalah mungkin yang duduk sebagai adjudicators di, di dalam hall atau ruangan tersebut. Um, we're going to see the next one. Points of order concerning the procedure of the debate must be addressed to the chair. This can be brought at any time and take priority over all other speeches. However, these are only used in exceptional circumstances when the rules and standing orders are being abused and the speaker making the point must be certain that the point of order is appropriate. In British parliamentary, there is no such thing as points of personal privilege which are used in the US or Canada. At worlds or Europeans, it is made clear to the competitors in briefing that only points of information may be offered. Repeated attempts to offer any other sort of point can be heavily penalized by the adjudicators. Nah, jadi poin ketujuh ini, points of order itu hanya berlaku untuk POI. Jadi tidak ada istilah points of personal privilege. Tidak ada. Jadi points of personal privilege itu maksudnya um, memberikan statement pada saat seseorang berdebat, tapi itu berupa sebuah privilege. There's no such thing in British English parliamentary debate system. Point number eight is speakers must observe parliamentary language. For example, bad language is not permitted. Jadi ingat ketika dalam kita berdebat, kita tidak boleh menggunakan bahasa yang tidak baik. Kita harus menggunakan bahasa yang sopan dan bahasa yang santun. Oke. Okay. Bagaimana bahasa yang santun itu? Apakah nadanya tinggi atau nadanya lembut? It, it, it actually depends. Depends on how you express the language. Bahasa yang nadanya lembut saja bisa tidak santun, tidak sopan. Bahasa nadanya tinggi bisa jadi sopan, bisa bercanda. Gitu ya. Number nine, the use of props is not permitted in a debate. Yang dimaksud dengan uh, poin ke-9 ini adalah Ketika kita berdebat, tidak boleh menggunakan properties, misalnya pakai buku, pakai benda-benda untuk menunjukkan statement atau poin kita, itu tidak diizinkan selama kita berdebat. Ya. Point number 10, no amendment to the motion is permitted. You must debate the motion as presented and interpret it as best as you can. You cannot define a motion in a place or time specific sense. For example, you cannot set the debate in Dublin 1916 and therefore attempt to limit the scope of the debate information which the other teams can use. Now. Jadi tidak ada amendment. Amendment kepada motion misalnya, kalau kita tarik debater yang lainnya, itu terjadi pada tahun 1916 misalnya di Dublin. <coughs> Excuse me. Ya, itu nggak bisa seperti itu. Karena terjadinya tahun 1916. Kalau kita berdebatnya di konteks sekarang, berarti kita membahasnya di konteks sekarang. Because what happens in the past happened in the past. 
we cannot bring what happened in the past to today, except if there's something good at the time. The next one, number 11, the house, which will often be referred to, is basically the chairperson competitor's audience. Yeah, the house, it's almost yeah, hall, house of chambers, or house of parliament. Okay, jadi sekelompok orang-orang di ruangan itu yang disebut dengan house. Kemudian number 12, uh, di sini ya, yeah, as you can see, number 12, the speakers are evenly divided on both sides of the motion. Speakers for the motion are the proposition or government. Speakers against are the opposition. Jadi kita lihat sebelah ini, sebelah kiri ini proposition atau government, sebelah kanan adalah opposition, pihak oposisi. Okay, nah kita lihat number 13. The opening proposition speaker, sometimes called prime minister, has to define or interpret the motion. If this definition is unreasonable or irrelevant, then the opening opposition speaker may challenge the definition. But if the definition is irrelevant but just doesn't suit the opening opposition, speaker attempting to redefine may not go down well with the adjudicators. If a definition is given, all the other speakers or teams completely ignore it, then the defining speaker is effectively out of the debate. Definition must also be fair and debatable, truistic or self-proving arguments are not accepted. For example, The sea is full of water is pretty hard to reasonably argue against. For full guidelines as to who can redefine and when, please refer to the rules of British Parliamentary, for example, the Sydney 2000 rules. Okay. Jadi poinnya di sini, ketika Prime Minister, ini opening proposition speaker dari government, Prime Minister membuka uh, motion debate, dia akan mendefine atau menginterpretasi dari motion debate yang diberikan oleh Dewan Juri. Ketika Prime Minister tersebut memberikan definisi dari motion tersebut yang tidak beralasan atau tidak relevan, kemudian pihak lawan, yaitu opposition leader, um, bisa challenge definisi tersebut. Tapi, ya, tapi jika definisi atau interpretasi dari motion tersebut uh, relevan, cuman tidak co- tidak cocok menurut si opposition leader. Uh, jadi speaker yang opposition tadi itu itu tidak tidak akan uh, bernilai bagus menurut dewan juri ya jadi hati-hati ketika anda berperan sebagai opposition leader anda harus mengikuti definisi yang diberikan oleh prime minister anda tidak mengargue anda tidak meribat tapi anda memberikan alternatives oke okay? uh, tapi jika prime minister sudah memberikan definisi tapi ternyata kemudian Speaker-speaker yang lainnya sampai ke terakhir uh, malah mengikuti apa yang dibilang oleh opposition leader, maka si prime minister out dari debate. Berarti dia sudah kalah, gitu ya. So that's the dan ingat juga definisi yang diberikan oleh prime minister tidak boleh truistic atau self-proving. Di sini diberikan contoh, uh, the sea is full of water. Laut itu penuh dengan air, ya. Yeah. Gak mungkin dong kita memberikan uh, argumen lagi terhadap statement tersebut. Samudra penuh dengan air. Atau api itu panas. Atau uh, air mata keluar ketika kita sedih. Nah, itu kan tidak tidak perlu tidak perlu di, diperdebatkan ya. Nah, yang perlu kita berikan itu adalah um, a fact, ya, a fact atau your opinion. Um, it's very debatable at the time. Yeah. Yang ke-14, the last speaker on each side is expected to sum up his or her side's arguments and rebut or refute the arguments of the other side. Generally, this speaker will not add a great deal of new information to debate now. Jadi ketika, excuse me, jadi ketika uh, debater yang terakhir, yaitu di government whip atau opposition whip, itu nanti tidak boleh memberikan ide yang baru. hanya mengikuti apa yang sudah diberikan oleh tim sebelumnya dan juga meribat argumen atau ide dari pihak lawan. Ya, itu yang harus dipahami. Berikutnya kita lihat uh, ke-15. 
Rebuttal is fatal in any competitive speech. Any argument left on challenge is allowed to stand. The later you come in a debate, the more rebuttal you must use. Rebuttal basically involves ripping the opposition side's argument apart and exposing its weak points. However, don't forget to make your argument and ideally use that to rebut. It is important to also point out that unlike the style of debating in some countries, you do not have to defeat every one of the opponent's points. But of course, all the key ones must be knocked down. If the government makes 19 points and you only managed, managed to hammer 17 in the time allowed, then you will win. And any attempt by the government to point out that two of the arguments are left standing is basically grasping at straws. Okay. Nah, ini, ini rebuttal. Jadi rebuttal itu semacam ketika kita berdebat di dalam suasana debat. It's very fatal. Nah, katanya kalau kita memberikan statement government misalnya memberikan 19 uh, poin dan kita mengagu 17 dan 17 itu kuat maka kita akan menang kalau saya berada di pihak oposisi misalnya ya tapi kalau misalnya um, saya berada di pihak government maka kita di posisi uh, safe zone comfort zone It's actually sampai opposition leader bisa mentackle atau seperti ini kata menghammer um, 19 poin tadi itu Next one, be careful to avoid leaving statements hanging in mid-air. If you say something important, back it up. Just because you know something is true and where it came from, that doesn't mean the audience or adjudicators know where it came from and why it's true. To a certain degree, the safest bet is to assume that the audience know little or nothing about the subject. Did it be careful? Did it? Hati-hati katanya ya, kalau ada statement yang sudah kita keluarkan di dalam berdebat, jangan biarkan keluar begitu saja. Kita harus membackupnya dengan relevant data atau statement-statement yang uh, berkaitan seperti itu. Oke, okay. uh, number 17, kita lanjutkan. Uh, specialized knowledge should not be used to unfairly define emotion. If you are illegal, scientific, management, computer, etc., student, then you must remember that Others in the debate may be experts in another field of study. Unfair definition would, would include things like why the case of Smith versus Jones is more important to company Lowe than Ryan versus Kelly. These are just examples. I have no idea if the crisis even exists. Okay, so according to the statement, maksudnya specialized knowledge ini, contoh begini, Anda mahasiswa jurusan um, PPKN misalnya ya. Kemudian lawan Anda mahasiswa jurusan Bahasa Indonesia. The Prime Minister dari jurusan PPKN tidak boleh menggunakan ilmu konteks dari PPKN ke dalam depan. Kenapa? Karena lawan Anda bukan berasal dari bidang studi yang sama. Lawan Anda dari siapa? Dari jurusan Bahasa Indonesia. Ya, tentu lawan Anda akan bisa menggunakan ilmu Bahasa Indonesia. So it's going to be unfair. Okay, use use a very common sense and use a general knowledge in the debate. Everything everybody knows. Okay, so you can use the fact and you, and you need to guide your opinion. That's that's the key. Number eighteen. Just because you may not be competing this does not mean that you can take no part in the debate. All debates are usually open up to the floor after the last speaker and once the adjudicators have retired. Often there is a prize for the best speaker here, but time allowed is usually no more than three minutes to allow as many people take part as possible. Jadi biasanya setelah debat itu berlangsung, ada delapan speaker ya, government empat speaker, opposition empat speaker, nah udah selesai semuanya itu, termasuk adjudicators atau dewan jurinya sudah retired, maksudnya sudah Uh, break misalnya karena tiga menit setelah itu para penonton bisa memberikan argumen nah, katanya kadang-kadang pembicara di saat momen ini akan diberikan hadiah dan waktunya tidak boleh lebih dari tiga menit rules berikutnya adalah heckling is also common in some debates this involves members of the audience offering some good humor abuse to the competitors <laughs> however 
there is a fine line between heckling and barracking, and members of the audience should remember to respect the speaker. Heckling can be, be scary at first, but you will soon get used to it. So heckling ni semacam kita memberuka, memberikan uh, apa uh, humor atau bercandaan yang yang sedikit menjatuhkan lawan, tapi sebenarnya menghibur. Good, good kata ini. Good humor to be used to the competitors. Ini kepada lawan. Contoh misalnya seperti ini. Contoh ketika saya lomba debat, saya pernah melawan mahasiswa dari Universitas Negeri, Negeri Semarang. Saya bilang begini. Oh, my dear lovely competitors in this debate, you stated such a very lovely statement that you miss a few important points. I know you're a student, but the statement was actually derived by a professor, professionals at the time. So, seperti itu, jadi uh, good humor views is very good. Yeah, um, just making humor at the time. Okay, but again, if you If you uh, think that your humor doesn't really work well, you don't have to use it. Number 20, private members time or PMT is a period of time at the start of each debate where members may bring up a motion or issue that they wish to see debated. Speeches here are limited to three minutes. This is often a part of the debate which is not only used to raise issues, but also where many speakers show off their wit and humor. Okay, so that's the point. Uh, point number twenty. Uh, Memberikan uh, motion ya yeah, kepada private members time. Jadi setelah uh, lomba um, it's debate members issue dan itu diberikan waktu selama tiga menit. Number twenty one. Remember, you do not necessarily have to believe the side of the motion you are on. You just have to make it appear as though you strongly believe in it for seven minutes. In competitive debates, you will have very little choices to which side of emotion you get. Yeah, betul. Jadi ketika saya mengikuti lomba debat, kadang-kadang dapat motion yang saya, sen saya sendiri sebenarnya secara pribadi nggak setuju. Uh, tapi sebagai seorang debater yang harus profesional, saya harus menyetujui motion tersebut. Misalnya, um, saya berada di posisi government. Jadi kalau posisi government adalah posisi yang affirmative toward the motion. Kita harus mensupport apapun motion yang diberikan oleh the House of Parliament. Oke. Okay? Nah, contohnya misalnya um, the legalizing marijuana misalnya. Contoh itu. It's a very debatable, ya. Yeah? And then kata legalizing, oke, okay, you know, at that time um, saya enggak setuju misalnya. Kenapa? Karena dalam pikiran saya konteks legalizing itu adalah memberikan kesempatan kepada publik atau masyarakat umum untuk memiliki akses di dalam membeli marijuana dan bisa mengkonsumsinya secara bebas. Itu konteks dalam pikiran saya dengan kosakata legalizing. Tapi kemudian saya berada di posisi government yaitu posisi untuk mendukung motion tersebut. Jadi saya harus mendukung nih ceritanya nih mendukung marijuana agar ilegal karena bagaimana caranya so that's the, the rules of the prime minister nah, jadi uh, tentu caranya adalah dengan memberikan uh, penjelasan makna legalizing di sini adalah based on law nah jadi saya batasi based on law uh, berdasarkan hukum yang sudah diapprove oleh uh, negara legalizing so it's legal nah and then i mentioned at the time Nah, legal di sini ketika digunakan di rumah sakit. So, uh, my statement at the time, ladies and gentlemen, adjudicators and my opposition team, thank you for allowing me to stand in front of you today. My statement about this motion, I repeat, this house will, uh, believes to legalize marijuana in, um, for public, for public at the time. So I explained uh, untuk masyarakat uh, harus ditanya secara hukum seperti itu ya. Yeah. So jadi kita kita tidak harus malah mm, meyakini motion yang kita dapatkan. Kadang saya mendapatkan uh, about uh, same sex marriage misalnya atau motion yang berkaitan dengan uh, banning the uh, UN ujian nasional 
national examination for senior high school students seperti itu. Nah, jadi uh, tidak semua konteks dan situasi motion yang kita harus yakini dan kita percayai. Berikutnya, uh, rules untuk debating yang ke-22 adalah no matter how bad you think your speech is, try to stay up for the full seven minutes. If the audience is giving you a hard time, just remember that they probably want you to walk off, so don't give them the pleasure. If the chair doesn't control the audience, ask him or her to and put him on the spot with the, with the adjudicators. Of course, you have to be able to handle a reasonable amount of heckling. <laughs> heckling ini kita bertindak melakukan sesuatu yang sebenarnya tidak berargumen, but just spending your time in front of the house at the time. Jadi, um, seberapa jelek pun Anda berbicara di depan itu, usahakan untuk berbicara selama 7 menit. Ya, jadi, jangan langsung duduk. Saya masih ingat ketika men-train mahasiswa, debate, baru 1-2 menit, udah KO, langsung duduk. Thank you very much, that's all my speech, and uh, thank you, wassalamualaikum. <laughs> and then I said, saya bilang begini, kalau Anda berdebat seperti itu, Anda akan KO, Anda kalah. Biasakan berbicara di depan panggung itu selama 7 menit. Ya, itu harus dipahami. Usahakan 7 menit. Biar deh yang ngomongnya lambat seperti ini. Jadi, and gentlemen, thank you for um, for me today. I am the government member. I will explain to you um, that uh, I agree because The motion is, nah, kalau berbicara seperti itu memang agak kayak siput ya, hmm, slow banget. Tapi harus diingat bahwa yang penting di sini adalah matter. Matter itu adalah argumen yang anda keluarkan, plus bagaimana cara anda menjelaskannya itu yang penting, ya. Oke, okay, kemudian yang ke 23 kita lihat, you don't have to be genius for facts and figures to do well. If you can remember an example or fact which you researched to back up your argument, use it. However, if you get stuck and can't remember the exact details of the fact you want to use, don't worry about it. If the underlying details of the report, research, etc. are correct, then the chances are you will not be challenged and the point will be made. If an opposing member corrects you and gives you the correct name of the report, researcher, Institute, etc. Then they are an idiot for backing up your case. <laughs> This is so funny. Um, jadi kita tidak harus menjadi orang yang genius uh, dalam debate itu memberikan fakta dan tokoh-tokoh agar kelihatan sempurna dalam debate. Katanya nih, kalau ada contoh fakta beberapa yang berkaitan dengan motion debate tersebut, nggak apa sampaikan aja. Nah kalau ternyata yang anda sampaikan itu ternyata salah, lalu dikoreksi oleh Ya, lawan maka otomatis anda menang <laughs> ya berarti memang ada penelitian data seperti itu cuman keterangannya kurang lengkap oke okay? be careful it's slippery slope berikutnya you don't have to be genius or five figures do well if you can remember oke okay, um, oke okay. It can be risky if you get caught by a member of the opposing side who actually knows what they're talking about. It can be painful, believe me, but it can be very effective if you get away with it. This is not, however, a replacement for good research. Only a fallback if you're in trouble. Nah, jadi, kalau misalnya pihak lawan ternyata tahu dengan tepat ada yang salah dengan penyataan Anda saat memberikan fakta dan statement, maka Anda berada dalam masalah yang besar. Ya. Kalau dalam debate tersebut, yaitu kita harus bisa memberikan statement dan argumen yang tepat serta fakta yang relevan. Jadi tidak asal bunyi dan tidak serta merta mengatakan oh saya tidak setuju, I disagree, I disagree because blah blah blah. No, the point is the best statement, the best debater is those who utterly state the statement clearly with um, with vivid arguments and clear fact. Itu yang the best debater, okay? Naik ke 24, if you can use humor, you can be extremely effective in a debate. You can ridicule and destroy an opponent's whole speech with one-line joke attacking it, but don't go over the top 
While humor helps, educators may not be impressed by stand-up routine with little substance. <laughs> Although humor can be an advantage, don't worry if you can crack a joke to save your life or speech. You'll be surprised at the number of speakers who have to really struggle to include humor in a speech while others do it with yes. Nah. Jadi yang dimaksudkan poin ke-24 ini adalah ketika Anda memberikan humor, uh, mulai dari para minister, kemudian opposition leader, dan seterusnya, jangan keseringan memberikan humor. Kenapa? Karena Dewan Juri akan menilai ini para debaters ini bercanda. Ya. Dalam artian substansinya mana? Kok nggak ada sih? Gitu. Nah, makanya dalam kehidupan sehari-hari pun saya seperti itu. Ketika ada pernyataan atau statement dari orang lain, itu yang saya lihat adalah substansinya apa. Kalau cara menyampaikannya tidak patut, substansinya lihat. Nah, kalau caranya menyampaikan tidak patut dan substansinya juga kosong atau tidak ada, maka itu bukan sebuah argumen. Itu yang disebut dengan pernyataan kosong. Tidak ada substansi. Dan tidak perlu diperdebatkan. Yeah, so, debatable means when you have argument and relevant fact. And it should be rational and logically accepted. Oke, okay, nah sekarang kita lanjut to the next part. Structure of his speech. Masih lanjut dengan saya ya. Please listen to me. Structure of his speech. Nah, ini first minute. Lihat itu. Dari um, 0 menit sampai 1 menit kemudian, ini adalah uh, poin untuk memberikan statement. Tidak ada POI. What you need to do is win the audience perhaps with a joke. Oke, okay. with a joke misalnya. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, this is such a nice day for me to say. I hear the previous debater that they seem to be lost in giving their argument. Now it's my turn to be shining like a star. Nah, cukup sampai situ aja. So, this is a joke, okay? Nggak apa-apa. Nah, kemudian, don't rebut another speaker's speech. Nah, jadi misalnya ada pihak lawan, jangan rebut dulu. Misalnya, ladies and gentlemen, I disagree with what the previous speaker said because that debater was lost in his mind. Misalnya, jangan seperti itu. ya. Yeah. So, you need to focus on your statement. That's the first minute. Kemudian ini katanya, define your speech, example, say what you will address and how. Say what you will address, seperti ini ya contohnya. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to say as the prime minister, or what I'm going to say as the deputy opposition leader is that I have two statements. First, my statement is that I disagree with the motion because the motion needs to be carefully evaluated on the basis of human potential problem. Okay. My second statement is related to the understanding of the motion from the perspectives of social science and natural science for that matter. Okay, so, so social science and natural sciences are very broad. Very common. Okay, everybody knows that. Kecuali Anda menjadi debater di sekolah, ya mungkin nggak tahu kan. Nah, nah yang ke kemudian berikutnya, ideally be able to state your argument in a single short sentence. Nah, ini penting. Jadi seperti saya bilang tadi, single short sentence. Ladies and gentlemen, on this occasion, I am the deputy of opposition leader would state two statements dealing with this motion. The first statement is that the motion needs to blah, 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 blah. The second statement is that the motion should blah, 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 blah. Nah, satu menit selesai, habis. Oke, okay, itu memberikan statement di bagian awal. Ya, Jadi jangan langsung, jangan misalnya kita uh, chair bilang, Ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker is from the opposition team. We would like to call the beauty of opposition leader. The floor is yours, misalnya. Ya. Lalu saya muncul ke depan nih. Nah, tiba-tiba saya pas di depan saya bilang gini, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I disagree with what the prime minister said because blah blah. Nah, itu sudah salah. Jangan langsung ngeribat. Oke. Okay? Satu menit pertama habiskan untuk memberikan statement. Kemudian, define your team approach. For example, say roughly what your partner will say or has said. Nah, jadi boleh ribat seperti ini ya contohnya. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as the deputy of opposition leader, I frankly or I firmly state that two statements dealing with the opposition. The first one, blah, blah, blah. Second statement is that the motion should blah, 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 blah. My opposition leader has stated that A, B, C, and D. Now, as the deputy of opposition leader, I would say E, F, G, H. Okay, nah seperti itu. Jadi kita menyambung dengan opposition leader dan fungsi kita sebagai deputy of opposition leader. Jadi sinkron dia. Nah, jadi jangan pula uh, kita deputy kita kita satu tim tapi kita membelot. Jangan. You don't have to do that. Okay. Nah, kita masuk menit kedua. Ini berlaku untuk setiap speaker ya. Menit kedua katanya begini. Um, Don't take any points of information until foundation has been laid. Example, until you have developed your speech a bit. Jadi jangan ambil POI sampai uh, kalian sudah membentuk statement kalian dalam uh, berbicara di depan podium. Ya, Jadi jangan langsung terima POI. Nanti ada lawan points of information. Uh, points of information seperti POI please. Misalnya. Langsung terima. Yes please, jangan. Kita berikan dulu kesempatan untuk kita untuk memberikan argumen. Makanya yang disebut poin kedua, lay out your argument. Dan yang ketiga, usually best to propose or oppose on three points. For example, political, economic, social. Dan yang terakhir, begin your first point. Nah, mulai dengan poin pertama Anda. Jadi, um, tadi seperti saya bilang ini ya, Ladies and gentlemen, sekarang saya ganti posisinya. Tadi kan sebagai deputy of opposition leader. Sekarang saya ganti sebagai government member. Okay, nah, please listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, as the member of the government, I frankly stated that I have two statements from the government team. The first one, that the motion is A, B. The second statement is that the motion is CD. A, B, C, D. Lalu dikembangkan ke bawah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The first statement of mine is A, B. What I mean by A is that blah, 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 blah. And then B is blah, 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 blah. For example, blah, 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 blah. And A, B needs to be carefully looked at by the opposition because it is very important for the public to feel Blah, 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 blah. Nah, seperti itu. Jadi, ada berpikir secara logis dan rasional di sana. ya. Meskipun kita hanya berbicara, tapi padanan antara berpikir dengan bahasa serta ketepatan di dalam mencerna informasi itu terlihat pada waktu kita melakukan debat. Yang ketiga, usually best to propose or oppose on three points. Jadi, um, misalnya kita pecah dalam tiga. Political secara politis, ekonomis, dan secara sosial. Seperti saya bilang tadi, for the safety of public. Nah, berarti itu saya berbicara dari segi unsur sosial. Nah, begin your first point. Itu dua menit pertama. Nah, menit ketiga dan menit keenam, kita boleh menerima dua sampai tiga POI. Say outline political aspects and deal with them. Jadi, political aspect, apa aspek politisnya? Kita sebutkan lalu, uh, then take a POI on that. Jadi ambil POI di, di situ ya. Kemudian, do the same for other aspects, example economics and social. Jadi kita urut uh, secara political, bla 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 bla, secara ekonomi, bla 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 bla, kemudian secara sosial, begini, begini, begini. Nah, jadi cara kita berbicara saat berdebat itu sangat logis dan runtut. Jadi nggak asal blak 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 blak, bukan begitu. Debat secara ilmiah membutuhkan kemampuan berbahasa yang jelas, artikulasi kosakata yang tepat serta cara berpikir rasionalnya itu yang harus dilihat ya. Itu yang harus. Jadi tidak hanya tidak hanya sekedar menyerang plak 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 bukan kan. Oke. Okay. Nah di saat kita runtut itu ada political, ada economical, ada social kan ada tiga item itu boleh kita ambil POI misalnya ketika kita berbicara tentang ekonomi muncul POI, ambil satu aja. Nanti, okay. Now I move on to the next point of mind about social. In terms of the social, blah 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 blah. 
Nanti ada POI. POI please katanya kan. Ambil. Yes please. Oke. Okay. So. Tapi jangan lupa tetap you need to construct your ideas, your point of view. Refer back to the single. Oke. Okay. Yang ke berikutnya ini katanya. Use this four minutes to make all your points. Effectively, this is your speech. Nah, jadi gunakan empat menit yang itu untuk uh, secara efektif membangun uh, speech kita di, di atas panggung. Kemudian refer back to the single short core sentence one or two times. Jadi boleh kita refer kalimat satu atau dua kalimat pendek yang sangat uh, precise, jelas. Terakhir, nah, menit ketujuh nih yang terakhir ya. Once the six minute bell has gone, you can be offered any points of information. Jadi POI sudah close, tidak ada lagi POI. Kemudian finish the point you were on as quickly as possible. Segera selesaikan statement Anda ketika masuk menit ketujuh. Don't introduce any new points or arguments. Jangan tambahkan lagi ide baru. Sum up, reiterate your main points and arguments and those of your partner if you are the second team speaker. Nah, jadi sum up. Uh, ringkas ya kalau misalnya tidak kita ringkas poinnya nanti uh, apa second team speakernya akan mengambil seperti itu ya jadi ringkas sum up I believe possible restate the single core sentence as the last thing you say nah, jadi pada menit ketujuh ini anda ringkas jangan diulang lagi nah, seperti tadi menit pertama alright misalnya bunyi bell ya tet menit ketujuh All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, as the beauty of opposition leader, I said two statements dealing with the motion. First one is that, and the second one, that the motion should be done. Seperti itu. Nah, selesai. Okay. Kemudian, sudah tujuh menit. Stay on your feet until you hear the bell. Nah, kalau misalnya kita belum selesai, tetap berdiri di, di, di atas panggung itu, di podium. Nanti, um, finish immediately if possible. Kalau terdengar, adjudicator bilang seperti ini. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg you to to sit down misalnya itu. Nah, itu berarti kita harus segera berhenti. Be back in your seat by 7.15. Maksimal 7 menit 15 detik. Tidak lebih dari 7 menit 30 detik. Lebih dari itu berarti you have consumed uh, the debating time. That will make your score uh, downgraded. Sekarang kita masuk ke speaking style. Nah, see, nah, ini sudah 53 menit ini nih, sudah mendengarkan saya ini. So, I will move on to the speaking style. The first one, you must speak clearly and loudly enough so that your voice can be heard by everyone. Remember, the adjudicators will sit to watch the rear of the hall So at the very least, they must be able to hear what you are saying if you are to have any chance of winning. However, you shouldn't shout that the holes have generally been designed so that your voice will carry toward the back. Jadi jangan teriak di saat Anda debate. Cukup berbicara secara elegan. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, on this occasion, I, as the Prime Minister, clearly state that the motion today is that the house would give a death penalty to corruptors. Seperti itu, ya. Nah, jadi, it's going to be that um, interesting for the audience and the house to listen. Kemudian kedua, try to avoid monotone. Nah, hindari monotone seperti ini. Ya. Monotone itu seperti ini. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk today about the motion. The motion is about the house would give the penalty to the corruptors. We know that corruptors are people who do bad things to the country. They steal people's money and they do it wholeheartedly. What they do is completely bad. And we actually try to uh, capture them and put them in jail. Nah, that's... <laughs> Kalau Anda dalam melakukan debate seperti itu, tidak ada ritme ketika Anda berbicara maka itu akan terjadi monoton. It's going to be boring, okay? So if you are making an important point, use your voice to stress it and make it stand out, okay? Gunakan statement seperti ini. Ladies and gentlemen, corruption is a bad idea for country. So we need to punish people who do corruption because it will damage and ruin 
the welfare of a nation. I would state that the motion should be followed by everyone. Nah, seperti itu contohnya. Jadi ada penekanan-penekanan di kosakata-kosakata yang sangat penting. Nah, ketika saya berdebat ya seperti itu. So, suara saya mungkin enggak terlalu ngebas, enggak terlalu ini, but when I say important words in my debate, I'm going to use the stress. Ladies and gentlemen, today we encounter the COVID-19 pandemic situation. Everyone is going to die because of the virus. We need to help each other. Help. Jadi, so the emphasis penekanannya adalah help each other. Okay, saling membantu satu sama lainnya. Kan sebenarnya sebelum ada virus kan kita juga seharusnya saling membantu ya kan. Tapi membantu dalam artian membantu pembangunan, membantu pengembangan ilmu seperti itu. Ya. Kemudian kita lanjutkan. Try to slowly increase the stress and force behind your voice as you go through your speech. Build up to a high point and make this the crucial point of your speech. However, don't bring the audience on a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Roller coaster, right? Don't start high, fall down, build up, and fall down again. It looks as though you are only convinced about the truth of how to speech. Jadi, jadi jangan seperti roller coaster, naik turun, naik turun, naik turun, naik turun seperti ini. Contohnya begini ya. Saya ambil posisi sebagai uh, opposition leader. Ladies and gentlemen, and the adjudicators, we actually know that. Everyone is trying to debate the motion. The motion is interesting to be debated. I, as the opposition leader, state that this is in need of further correction. Nah, jadi jangan seperti itu. Jangan roller coaster naik turun, naik turun, naik turun. Jangan. You need to um, penekanannya pada kosakata kosakata yang cara kita rasa penting. Dan di situ ada poinnya di sana, ya. Jadi jangan asal asal nyablak gitu kalau kita dalam melakukan uh, debate. And then the third one, speaking style, keep in, keep eye contact with the audience and don't stare at the podium. Hmm. It gets easier to do this after some experience and once you use fewer notes. Some people like to pick out individuals in the audience and look at them. Others just speak to the audience as a whole. However, you do it. Make sure you just scan the audience and move your gaze to different parts parts of the hall regularly. Ketika anda berbicara dalam di atas podium, pastikan eye contact seperti saya sekarang nih. Saya ngeliat ke kapan kalian nih ya melalui kamera. Berarti making eye contact artinya saya berbicara dengan anda. Gitu. Jadi ketika anda berada di atas podium, jangan hanya melihat kepada podium, lihat kepada audiens. Sesekali lihat educators, lihat pihak lawan, lihat pihak sana, lihat situ, di belakang, di depan. Jadi kita kita sapu ruangan tersebut dengan pandangan kita ya. ya mereka ngapain ngapain kok mereka cuma duduk. So, ladies and gentlemen, as the time going, I would state the motion today is that we need to support the children who are starving. In every corner of Indonesia, hmm, seperti itu contohnya ya. Jadi, uh, we need to really engage with the audience. Berikutnya, yang keempat, use your body language to back up your speech. Your body language. If you stand rigidly and don't move, then you will find it very difficult to have any real conviction in your voice. Use your arms and facial expression to convey your emotion and back up your speech. Jadi menggunakan uh, ekspresi wajah dan bahasa tubuh dalam memberikan ekspresi misalnya seperti ini. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most difficult situation for every one of us. Remember, COVID-19 situation is still happening. Based on the data from WHO of the United Nations that People are suffering, and we need to do some help to recover the problem. As the Prime Minister, the motion today is the House would help poor countries to recover from the economic crisis, ladies and gentlemen. 
I strongly believe nah seperti itu ya. Nanti saya kepanjangan pula nanti. Nah, jadi jadi use body language your hands, your face. This is suffering atau happy. Okay. So you you you, you should Use your body language, okay? Your face. It's show that you are alive. You you are there. You're not a robot. You're a human, okay? No one can make a better human than than than. than, than. <laughs> no one can be a better human if you're being a human, okay? This is what I mean. However, don't go overboard. Nah, ini katanya, don't go overboard. You want the audience's attention to be focused on your speech, not your arms. Oh, jangan begini terus. Jangan seperti itu ya. So precisely is a very important. That's very good, misalnya. Nah, jadi sesekali, oke. Okay. Ya, jadi jangan jangan keseringan tangannya. Pop, 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 gitu jangan. Try not to have anything in your hands. Nah, jangan jangan ada pula ini nah, atau ada pena. Misalnya kalau ada pena, suka begini. Nah itu. Kita dalam berdebat di, di depan panggung itu akan mengurangi penampilan. Your speaking style. Um, some people like to carry a pen and end up waving it about like a button, which can distract the adjudicators. If you really need something, use index card. Nah, misalnya seperti ini ya. Kalau saya dulu dalam uh, sebagai debater sampai ke tingkat nasional itu, saya selalu bikin catatan seperti ini. Nah, ini. Jadi. Ini kertas A4, saya potong 8, jadi ukurannya seperti ini. Nah, jadi bisa kita gunakan untuk mencatat poin-poin penting misalnya. Ya. Misalnya saya di posisi, pernah saya di posisi government member, itu setiap prime minister dan opposition, opening opposition, itu saya catat poin-poinnya. Nah, jadi ketika tiba giliran saya berbicara, saya tahu apa yang saya bilang. Dan saya tahu kapan saya meribat dan tahu kapan harus memberikan menerima POI dan bagaimana cara memberikan feedback kepada POI. Berikutnya, yang kelima, you don't have to stand strictly behind the podium. Move around a bit and face different section of the audience at different times. Apparently, studies have shown that people tend to prefer to be able to see the whole person as this is supposed to indicate that you aren't hiding anything. Okay. However, once again, don't go overboard. It annoys people, and more importantly, adjudicators. If you walk too far from the podium, try not to go more than one or two meters away from the podium. One way to ensure this is to leave your notes on the podium. You'll find yourself reluctant to move too far from them. Nah, so, ketika kita berbicara debat, kita harus tahu bahwa sesekali kita boleh bisa besar ke sini, besar ke sini, kemudian. Uh, Oke, okay, alright. Now that's the point. Seperti itu ya. Kita harus memberikan ada um, rigorous performance and eloquence at that, at that point. Tapi jangan terlalu jauh turun bawah podium. Jangan. Dek masih dekat podium, tapi kita bergerak kanan ke kiri, melihat ke audience, menunjukkan bahwa kita ada gitu ya. It is real us. Yang keenam, don't be too complicated. If your argument is too elaborate, people may have difficulty following it. Don't use 15 syllable Latin words when a two syllable English word will do. <laughs> Misalnya, uh, decomposo, decompositionalized. Jangan pakai itu. Just say improve or change. Make a simple one. Simple word, okay? Um, in debate, it's not. It's not the show of of how many words you know. It's no. It's, it's not like that. Okay. Can mm. I remember you are trying to convince the audience that your argument is the best, and not that you consider your talent wasted on them, <laughs> even if it is. <laughs> Jadi, your talent wasted. Maksudnya buang buang aja nampil sebagai debate, tapi bahasa Inggrisnya oke, okay, cuma nggak ada substansinya ya juga ngapain gitu ya. Sama dengan kehidupan sehari hari. Mungkin ada uh, yang Berbicaranya pandai, bagus, tapi substansinya nggak ada. Itu juga nggak bisa ya. Atau kita malah nunjuk-nunjuk orang, oh dia tuh nggak bisa. So it's, it should be very substantial. Make a simple one. Use words that you know and use words that most people know. Don't use Latin word, old classic word just to show that you're great. No. Seven, use humor. 
no, it's not humor. Use humor to help win over the audience and make your speech stand out. If you have a natural talent for comedy or imperson impersonation, etc., then use it. If you don't, then don't worry about it. Even the most serious of us can be funny at times, often even without meaning it. Okay, you can work out a few put downs and one liners in advance, but be careful. If a joke sounds too prepared, then it may bomb. Try to make it sound spontaneous, and it's more likely to be successful. Okay, so make it spontaneous. Jadi kalau kita mau ngelawak lucu, usahakan spontan. Jangan seperti kita udah prepare nih. Kalau nanti ngomong ini, ini lawakannya jangan. Itu akan terkesan garing, ya. Karena sama seperti kita, kita semua ini saling terkoneksi dengan hubungan yang yang abstrak ya ada benang benang kasta kasat mata di antara kita kalau kita sendiri kita kita ngelawak misalnya tapi tapi kita tahu lawakan kita nggak menarik orang akan merasakan hal yang sama be spontaneous nah terakhir katanya the best thing to do is watch other speakers and see how they combine the various elements experiment with different styles and try to find one that you are comfortable with however the only real way to develop a good style is to try to speak on a regular basis and listen to the advice of educators and the more experienced debaters that's the point all right so jadi uh, sambil kita menjadi debaters kita harus belajar juga dari debaters yang lainnya ketika kita lompat debat misalnya jangan jangan berpatokan hanya menjadi juara ambil juga ilmu atau pengalaman selama kita debat e, nanti ada mas yang bertanya Mister apakah Mister pernah juara debat misalnya pernah juara debat tapi saya juga pernah kalah tapi kalau dibanding bandingkan banyaknya ilmu pengalaman yang saya dapatkan justru ketika saya kalah ketika kita melihat lawan yang lebih Oh, tangguh lebih oke okay. kita bisa belajar mengkoreksi diri oh berarti kelemahan saya di titik ini oh seharusnya saya bilangnya begini oh datanya begitu faktanya demikian jadi kita dapat belajar dari educators nah justru dari hal seperti itu kita pernah kalah kita pernah menang dalam dua sisi seperti itu kita akan memiliki satu paket pengalaman yang akan sangat bermanfaat diberikan kepada generasi seterusnya seperti yang saya berikan sekarang dulunya saya sebagai debaters nah sekarang saya sebagai debate trainers kepada mahasiswa nah mudah-mudahan bermanfaat ya kita masih ada beberapa slide lagi 18 slide lagi oke okay? tetap tetap bersabar mendengarkan saya ya uh, oke okay, kita lanjut nah ini tentang POI points of information apa itu points of information? Nah, kita lihat points of information are a vital part of any debate and should not be underestimated. Before and after your speech, you can just sit quietly and enjoy the other speeches. You must keep the educators aware of your presence, ideas, and arguments. Also, POI can be used as a weapon to undermine and even destroy an opponent's speech. Nah, jadi, masih ingat tadi ya, satu menit pertama di debaters itu tidak, bis, tidak boleh diberikan POI. Masuk menit kedua, antara menit kedua sampai menit kelima kita boleh POI. POI please. Nah, Oke, okay, itu caranya. Atau points of information. On that point, sir. Madam speaker, on that point. Seperti itu. Kita masuk, kita interupsi seperti itu. Tapi jangan pula bilang interruption. Bukan. ya. Nah, presentation seperti ini. When giving, up, when giving a point of information, you are expected to stand up. Hold your left hand out seperti ini ya place your right hand on your head oke okay, seperti ini closer on your head where's my head here oke okay. and say on a point of information sir on a point of information sir nah boleh kita gini okay i'm going to show you from far like this on the point of information sir oke okay, begitu ya yeah. so Oh, I look chubby there. <laughs> okay, and uh, different people use slight variation on this, but this is the basic one. Often speed is important to get in first, but that is no guarantee that you will be accepted. So you should make sure that you have enough space to stand up quickly and at a split second's notice without sending your notes flying towards the podium. 
If we can do without a bench for writing, then a front row seat is ideal. If, however, you can, you can then you sit at the end of a row so that you need only stand out to the side. Once you have been accepted, stand facing the speaker at the podium, but also try to help face the chair in audience if possible. Seperti itu ya, jadi on that point of information, sir, on that point of information, ma'am. Okay, so it's 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 very interesting if you can do that, but do it in the second minute or the fifth or before the fifth minute of the um, the, the, the debater or the debater. Keep your POI short to the point. The maximum time allowed is 15 seconds. We should try to fall between five and 10 seconds. Remember that many speakers like to take a POI and then use the time to check what they will say next when half listening to the person offering the point. Once they know what the next part of the speech is they work on and answer to a point. If your point is only about five seconds in duration, it doesn't give them enough time and it's more likely to catch them. Especially if the point is weak and wouldn't work well if they had time to think about it. It looks bad if they have to stop to think what they say, especially if they have to ask you to repeat it. Jadi ketika, on that point of information, sir, misalnya ya. Jadi, lalu kita bilang begini, you might you might state misleading information from that point because the actual number is 100 instead of 50. Okay, that's that's the fact. Okay, so you need to just say it's you need to say a strong POI at that point. When you are speaking, you should accept two, three point. Nah, jadi posisinya ketika kita sebagai debater nih kita lagi ngomong, lalu kemudian ada POI, kita sebaiknya menerima dua sampai tiga POI. Nah, sementara sebelumnya, presentasinya ketika kita memberikan POI, itu nggak boleh lebih dari 15 detik. Makanya ngomongnya jangan jangan seperti ini, uh, I would like to, nah, baru sampai sana udah 15 detik. <laughs> ya, jadi, kita bicaranya harus cepat dan jelas. When you are speaking, you should accept two, three points. Watch out for good speakers. If someone has killed off every other speaker on your side, be careful and don't assume that you can handle them. Accept someone else, ideally someone who has been offering poor points all, all night. Points should not be longer than 15 seconds, but you can cut that person off before this if they're making a very poor point, and particularly if you have a good put down to use on them. Always deal with the point that is offered. Never accept the point is true, unless it's overestimate mistake and it backs up your argument. Always try to dismiss a point as incorrect or irrelevant. A point ignored is allowed as standing will go against you in education. Nah, seperti itu. Jadi jangan, jangan kita um, meremehkan POI dari pihak lawan. Kadang kalau kita ada melihat ketika misalnya gini, oh yang di posisi sebagai government whip misalnya atau sebagai posisi um, deputy prime minister atau posisi opposition member misalnya, ketika dia selal POI dia seringkali menjatuhkan tim kita nih tim-tim uh, sebelumnya anda harus hati-hati dalam menghadapi POI seperti itu tapi kalau POI yang sangat poorly stated yang sangat uh, lemah dinyatakan itu bisa langsung dipatahkan saat itu juga ya nah sekarang kita lihat Peran masing-masingnya. Pertama kita lihat ada Prime Minister, opening speaker. Ini menjelaskan tentang uh, define the motion. Ini, but it must be clearly linked to the motion. Nah, jadi dia memberikan um, definisi. Okay, seperti misalnya, this house believes that, kemudian, this house believes that northern nationalists have nothing to fear from United Kingdom. Irish Times 96 misalnya kemudian this house would nah, jadi jadi ada penggunaan kata would di sini kemudian ada believes that kalau yang menggunakan kata believes that ini berarti sudah status quo sementara kalau yang menggunakan kata this house would ini berarti baru berupa proposal nah, kalau proposal berarti kita harus memberikan alternatif sementara kalau this house believes that ini sebenarnya sudah sudah ketok palu Nah, tapi apa yang harus dilakukan opposition itu untuk meminta pemerintah atau government reconsider keputusan mereka dalam mensahkan itu ya reconsider oke okay? nah jadi bukan meng tackle lagi nah sementara kalau this house would would ini kan belum ketok palu belum jadi baru pada tahap proposal maka tugasnya kelompok opposition adalah memberikan 
argumen alternatif terhadap apa yang akan dilakukan oleh pemerintah. Nyatakan bahwa apa yang akan dilakukan oleh pemerintah adalah hal yang salah. Harus dengan fakta-fakta yang jelas. Kemudian, um, this is my experience. Itu contohnya dua itu ya, Prime Minister. Berikutnya katanya, Ketika kita mendefinisi sebagai prime minister, perhatikan ini. Saying saying that something is wrong and this is how it should be is not enough. You must say that something is wrong and this is what you're going to do about it. Ya, jadi prime minister. Jadi kalau misalnya kita menyatakan sesuatu itu salah atau sesuatu itu benar, apa yang harus kita lakukan? What you need to do itu yang penting. Bukan ini salah, kenapa? Karena ini, ini salah karena bla bla bla. Bukan hal ini salah maka kita akan melakukan ini 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 begitu. Ya. Contoh misalnya di sini diberikan poor definition. People have been discriminated against because of the sex, race, etc. And they shouldn't be in the future. Therefore, we we'll use something called positive discrimination. <laughs> It's a very poor. This house favor positive discrimination. Karena karena logikanya nggak nggak kuat itu ya, lemah di sini. Better definition. People have been discriminated against because of their sex, race, etc. And to correct that, we are going to take actions. Y, X, Y, and Z under the umbrella name of positive discrimination. You must then fully outline what action X, Y, and Z are how and how they will work. Seperti itu. Jadi sebutkan apa yang akan dilakukan. Opposition leader ini tugasnya adalah mentakul atau membattle dari um, government. Uh, jadi lawan dari prime minister. Oke, okay? posisinya sama kok. Nah, you've only seen a quarter of the government therefore at most a quarter of his speech should be rebuttal nah, jadi kalau opposition leader ini seperempat dari uh, speechnya itu berisi rebuttal um, mentackle me- 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 atau memberikan sosial alternatif dari apa yang diberikan oleh prime minister jadi anda tidak mendefine lagi anda tidak men- kecuali anda benar-benar yakin kalau yang dibilang oleh prime minister itu completely false atau completely wrong baru bisa kita you take the flow to define that but still you are not the prime minister berikutnya nah ini katanya ini it is also your duty to decide if the case is debatable if it isn't and be very very certain that it isn't then you must submit an alternative definition jadi berikan definisi alternatif okay. itu tugas dari opposition leader Ros berikutnya adalah deputy prime minister ini juga mengklarify dari yang diberikan oleh uh, prime minister and you can you can read this one you can you can post this and read it this is is very interesting and we have deputy of opposition leader it says uh, as with the second government speaker you must back up your teammate don't abandon your case because you realize that it is flawed fix it but don't get an entirely new one a good guideline is that you should spend double the amount of time reporting that your teammate and therefore the rest of your speech reserved for your team's case ini membantu dari opposition leader deputy of opposition leader juga ini memberikan ini if you remember this it should help you avoid the trap that a lot of opposition speakers fall into 100% point by point rebuttal There is a misconception that the position just have to person don't have to lend any constructive argument or matter to the debate. Okay, Now, constructive opposition always looks better than mere opposition for opposition's sake. This applies to debating as well as most things in life. Okay, jadi jangan jangan hanya sekedar meribat. Kemudian ada juga um, apa namanya don't have to lend any constructive argument. Itu or matter to the debate. Itu tidak boleh. Kita harus memberikan matter yang sangat kuat meskipun kita sebagai deputy opposition leader. Bentuk ketiga atau roles ketiga adalah member for the government, third government speaker. Ini you are the first speaker in the second half of the debate. Now you have options to consider first. Kalau ada definisi dan definisi tersebut adalah valid katanya, you must decide if going to follow the government line or switch to definition which the person has offered and take them on at that. Be careful. It is also possible to take a combination of both, but you will have to be careful not to tangle your argument up in trying to tie the two definitions all together. Nah, jadi kelebihannya adalah kalau kita sebagai member of the government, kita bisa ngambil statement dari opening government atau bisa ngambil dari opening opposition. Kalau misalnya dua-duanya bisa kita ambil, ambil. 
gitu ya enaknya jadi di closing uh, second half dari uh, debating team tapi if the government presented a case which was debatable but weak and has been thrown apart you cannot simply stab them in the back You may, however, bring in an extension. This allows you to bring in a new point of view while still roughly following the government line. Again, again, just as with first government, you must present a debatable definition. Okay? Jadi, kalau misalnya ada opening opposition tadi yang uh, tim sebelumnya menyatakan motion yang agak sedikit lari dari uh, motion sebelumnya dan sudah dipatahkan oleh pihak lawan, jangan langsung tusuk dari belakang. Jangan. Kita tetap ikuti definisi yang ada, tapi give the new alternative uh, yang debatable. Kemudian member of the government juga harus membackup the original government case. Jadi jangan jangan hanya uh, membail out seperti itu ya, jangan. Yang opposition speaker juga seperti itu. You can give a 100% rebuttal speech and you also are limited in that your mate will not be in a position to spend a lot of time developing a case. Uh, jadi ikuti dia jangan Meskipun kita posisi sebagai oposisi, kita harus jelas dalam hal itu seperti itu ya. Berikutnya, government whip. Both whips will be penalized if you do not sum up your side and rebut the position. Nah, ini pentingnya sebagai opposition leader, kita harus menjelaskan uh, poin pentingnya yang berkaitan dengan hal-hal yang sudah dijelaskan oleh tim-tim sebelumnya. Ya, jadi kita tidak memberikan ide baru. Kalau Anda sebagai government whip, hanya, Anda hanya memberikan uh, penjelasan Uh, sum up summary dari apa yang sudah dibicarakan uh, sebelumnya uh, opposition, opposition whip last speaker of the debate rebut, 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 rebut oh and sum up you are in a pole position you have had almost an hour to develop a speech and this is a huge advantage you should not bring new information into the debate but remember that by new information we mean new core arguments and examples in your rebuttal you may bring in New examples which relate directly to the point you are rebutting, but you cannot make them the central plank on which you, your entire argument is based. A lot of a lot of less up speakers will deal with the government speakers almost one at a time, and this generally works quite well and lends a structure to your speech. Yeah, jadi kalau kita berada di posisi sebagai opposition whip, maka kita memiliki waktu hampir satu jam untuk melihat semua statement dari semua debater. Oke, okay, that's a very huge advantage. Ini juga penjelasannya don't carry don't get carried away with your rebuttal and leave your sum up for the last 30 seconds. Rebut rebut boleh, tapi jangan lupa sum up summary. Sum up. Nah, sekarang kita lihat di sini. Ini adalah mm, British Parliamentary British Parliamentary English debate dimulai dari sini Prime Minister kemudian um, dilanjutkan dengan Opposition Leader and then we have Deputy of Prime Minister diikuti oleh Deputy of Opposition Leader Member for the Government yang kelima keenam adalah Member of the Opposition yang ketujuh adalah Government Whip dan yang kedelapan adalah Opposition Whip nah ini dia yang uh, posisi dari debaters dari awal sampai akhir. Yang pertama ini disebut opening opening team prime minister dan deputy prime minister dan opposition leader beserta deputy of opposition leader ini adalah opening. Sementara kalau closing yang ini ya 5 7 dan 6 8. Oke, okay, sudah sampai saya di slide yang ke-50. <laughs> So thank you for listening to me dari awal sampai akhir. Ini sudah cukup satu setengah jam saya online menjelaskan. Mudah-mudahan bisa bermanfaat. Kalau ada yang mau bertanya silahkan tuliskan pertanyaan di bawah. And uh, finally I would say thank you very much. Uh, I will stop share here. And if you have any question or anything that you would like to stay with me, you can ask me in our group or you can write in the comment section below. Until then, have a good time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye.